the cervix and pregnancy. The learning objectives are to know the different ultrasound routes for imaging the cervix, to know the pros and cons of the various methods, to understand how to correctly identify the cervix, and to know the technique for ultrasound examination of the cervix. The cervix is differentiated from the corpus by the tenth week of gestation. It is cylindrical in shape, and the distribution of muscle within the cervix is such that in the upper third, 29% is smooth muscle, while in the lower third, only 6.5% is smooth muscle. This is a, a schematic diagram of the cervix in pregnancy. Here is the cervical canal. Caudally, it ends at the external os. Cranially, as the internal os. Medial to the cervical canal is the cervical mucosa. And here, you have the stroma of the cervix. So, these are regions of the cervix to identify in the course of examining the cervix. Centrally, you have the cervical canal, which ends caudally as the external os and cranially as the internal os. So, measurement of the cervix should be in a straight line from the internal to the external os. It is extremely important to appreciate the cervical mucosa because frequently contractions come and go in the course of ultrasound scan and the lower segment may be thickened and the cervix will appear falsely long. It is extremely important to follow the cervical mucosa to where it ends beyond that area where the cervical mucosa ends is contraction and not the service and therefore the service should not be measured beyond this cervical mucosa so any of these techniques transabdominal transvaginal translabial and transectal can be used to assess the cervix Indication for evaluation of the cervix in pregnancy are cervical incompetence, separate and birth, placenta previa, cervical pregnancy, and of vasa previa, which is not part of what we are looking at today. This is the technique for, for evaluating the cervix transvaginally, because that is the cost standard. To empty the bladder. You use a prop with a frequency of greater than 5 megahertz, cover the prop with the prop cover, commonly a condom, and place the prop in the anterior phonics. Obtain a sagittal view, and the service should occupy 75% of the screen. Then determine the internal os, cervical canal, and endocervical mucosa as demonstrated in the diagram earlier. Measure the cervical length in a straight line. I have another video that covered the pitfalls in cervical assessment, so I'm not going to go into the details of the pitfalls. Here the question is very common condition that will lead to an unduly long cervix. When there's undue prop pressure by transvaginal prop, it will lead to echogenicity of the cervix and cervical elongation. It is important to note that the cervical length is more important than the shape of the cervix. When you take the measurements, use the shortest best of three Measurements. Apply transpondal pressure after obtaining three measurements. Assessment shouldn't take more than two to three method, minutes. And cervical assessment is now a part of pregnancy assessment. So a pregnancy assessment is, is incomplete without assessing the cervix. But when do you assess the cervix? Between 18 to 22 weeks. This is commonly when anomaly scan is done. Early, if the patient has a history 
or cervical insufficiency. Normal service is between 25 to 50 millimeters between 14 and 30 weeks of gestation. Less than 25 millimeters is considered short service, while greater than 50 millimeters may actually have included the lower segment. And that is why assessment of cervical mucosa is extremely important. When the service measures more than 5 millimeters, in all probability, the lower segment has been included. What do you measure? Internal to external os. Straight line. But if the service is too long or curved, you can take the measurements and sum up. What are the advantages of transabdominal imaging of the cervix? It's easy to learn. The prop is widely available. It's more acceptable and it gives a global view on the job of the service but of the surrounding structures. But what are the limitations? Fetal parts will obscure the cervix, so it will be difficult to assess the internal os. Full bladder will elongate the cervix, and you require full bladder for transabdominal uh, imaging. And full bladder at a time will, will obscure finally. And of course, the image quality is not as good as in transvaginal imaging. Now, this is a transabdominal image, bladder, vagina. Here, look at the cervix. You can define the cervix, the internal or external os here. But it's difficult to define the cervical mucosa here. All you can see is the stroma. Image quality is poor. And look at this shadowing for the fetal head. So if the fetal head was down here, it could obs obscure assessment of the internal cervical os. Translabial, easy to learn. The transabdominal cavity in the probe can be used, which is readily available. There is no probe pressure on the, on the service, and the service is visualized in 80%. In 20%, especially because of gas shadowing from the rectum, the external os cannot be visualized. Movements are limited, and of course it's difficult, as I said earlier, to examine the external os, as you've seen here. Do you use a translabial ultrasound scan? Case you offer center previa. Internal os, cervical canal, we cannot go beyond here. Look at the extensive shadowing from the rectum. Transabdominal, I beg your pardon, transvaginal ultrasound is the gold standard for assessing the cervix. Remember, prop in the anterior fornix. Advantages, very good image quality, reliable, accurate in prediction, recognizes early asymptomatic phase. It is also reproducible. In 95% of cases, differences between two examinations by the same examiner or different examiner shows a difference of 4 millimeters or less. Disadvantages are uh, proper pressure. When you apply too much pressure on the cervix, the cervix will contract and will lead to elongation of the cervix. The prop is not readily available. Contractions very common during ultrasound scan, especially of the cervix. You use tran transvaginal prop. Of course, quality control is an issue. Now, this is a transvaginal image. Look at the quality. Anterior lip, posterior lip, vagina, external os, internal os, cervical canal, cervical, mucosa. Here, the presenting part. This video just trying to demonstrate cervical sliding sign which is not present in this case. See that? Brother reflection here. Cervical mucosa. Cervical canal. Are you seen here? So, these are all transvaginal images. Look at the service. Clearly outlined anterior wall, posterior wall, external os, internal os, cervical mucosa, vagina, posterior phonics, posterior wall, anterior wall, cervical canal, internal os, cervical canal, external os, anterior wall, posterior wall, clearly outlined using transvaginal imaging. Again, at 36 weeks, singleton, at 36 weeks, multiple pregnancy. Indications for piloting the service during pregnancy 
with a long service you have long variable increases of induction variable for start pregnancy with a short service especially less than 10 millimeters increases of infection increases of chorioamnionitis spontaneous preterm birth and phonitis look at these two services finally close portion of the cervix finally close portion of the cervix both short services here completely face service with membrane in the vagina with the fetal limb protruding through the cervix again here the bladder anteriorly posteriorly cervical canal cervical mucosa again demonstrating cervical siding sign not clearly the cervical the progenies of the cervical mucosa compared to the stroma again negative cervical sliding sign here not a patient with a soft cervix asked to cough not the increased phenylalanine on coughing although transponder pressure has been shown to be more effective in demonstrating cervical deficiency than coughing here you have cervical canal internal os placenta look at this cervical invasion or cervical legs as other would describe it and this was a trans debial image of the same case another case of placenta previa anterior liver of the cervix posterior of the cervix cervical canal internal os placenta again not the cervical mucosa here the stroma cervical mucosa the stroma not where the mucosa begins and where the mucosa ends is where you have the internal and external os look at the ecogenicity of the mucosa slightly different from the stroma and look at the end and the subplacental vascularity here again transabdominal present the previa in a patient with a previous cesarean session no acreta here at 27 weeks with two previous cesarean session with features of acreta now look at the difficulty with trans abdominal ultrasound in the assessing the cervix the patient who presented with antipartum hemorrhage difficult to identify the cause but here you can see there was no local cause as far as cervix was concerned and you observe blood clots between the fetal head and the internal cervical os so this is a case of cervical pregnancy as you can see it is implanted below this line here you can see a t-shaped internal os y-shaped internal os v-shaped internal os u-shaped internal os so as far as the service is concerned always trust your vaginal ultrasound thank you very much